Hi, thanks for joining us today. If this ministry has impacted your life, we want to hear about it. You can send us your story at amen at vnchurch.com. Also, we would love if you would partner with us financially. You can go to vnchurch.com and click the Give Online or text your donation amount to 757 230 2110. Good to see you today. Welcome. Glad that you're here. If you're joining us online, we're glad that you're part of uh, uh, our series as we're moving into this series. I think this is part four, uh, making our lives count. I mean, what could be more important than that, right? Making a, you know, your life, you want to make a difference. You want it to count. <clears throat> I don't know if you remember ever going to the circus when you were young. I know they don't do the circus anymore, but there used to be uh, this trick that sometimes clowns would do, sometimes people would do, where they'd come out and they would start spinning uh, a plate on a, on a pole, like usually it was a tall pole, and then they would get it going, <clears throat> they'd put it in like some kind of ha- holder, then they would start another one, get it, then they would get like 10, 15 of these plates spinning, and right around the time they're getting the last one going, the other one's about to fall over, they run back over, and then they spin them, and they're keeping all of these plates spinning. There's a, that kind of thing, right? I mean, spinning all these places, you're just focused on that. I think that's a good description of how sometimes our lives are. You know, we're, we get one thing going, we got, you know, family over here, we've got some kind of hobby going here, we've got a school going here, and we just get all these things going, and we're just like consumed, running back and forth, trying to keep them all in the air without falling. <clears throat> and that would describe some of our lives, right? I mean, if you were to describe your life in one word, what would that word be? Have you ever thought of that? What would, you, what would that one word be for you? For some of you, it might just be like stressed out. You know, stre- that's two words, right? So you're not allowed to do that. Hectic. You know, I've, 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 under pressure, you know. But th- that's another two words, right? <laughs> but what I would hope that your life, if you were to summarize it in one word, it would be more like focused or purpose. You know, that you... You know, you have clarity on where you're going because a life with purpose is a life that makes a difference. That's a life that really uh, changes things and makes a difference. I mean, it's just like light, light diffused doesn't do a lot, but you take light and you focus it, it can, cut, it can become a laser and cut through steel. And so we want our lives to have purpose, to have focus. And so that's a big part of what we're talking about. Here Jesus talks about Uh, the purpose that he had, the clarity of purpose. He says, now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. Now he's saying this uh, when he's um, at the Last Supper to to his disciples. And he says here, he says, hey, I have brought you glory. He's clear about that. He's clear. Now, you know, if th- that's his clear purpose. The truth is that's our purpose. And when you get a purpose that, of that clarity, that oh, my life is to bring God glory, that settles a lot of things. It really does. It settles a lot of things in our lives. Paul said it this way. He said, I only want to complete my mission. He's got a clear mission. And finish the work that the Lord Jesus gave me to do. So because I, I, I understand clarity of thought. He didn't always have that. But he, he goes, I have purpose. I have a mission. God wants you to have that kind of clarity. If you've not taken the time to think about it, you end up just wandering through life. You end up spinning plates, and you're not clear on things. And so you're not sure how to make decisions, and you get more confused, and it gets more difficult. And so that's why we're taking the time as we're talking about making a life that, you know, that, that counts. 
You've got to have a life mission. This is what I'm calling your life mission, being clear about it. What is that? Well, it's a description of what I believe God wants me to do with my life. You, you, and preferably, you can even write it down. You should write it down. This is what I think God wants me to do with my life. Now, certainly, it's, it's a lifelong journey, but you want to gain clarity on that as much as possible so you can know, hey, am I fulfilling the mission that God has given me? Because you have a mission uh, that God wants you to do. Now, let me just say a couple things about the mission. Number one is it's really more than a goal. Sometimes people confuse this. They have goals, you know, and they'll say, oh, oh I have a goal to, you know, get a degree, to get this kind of profession, uh, to have, to get married, to have kids. I mean, all of those are good goals. To make a lot of money, great goal. But that's a goal. That's not a life mission. And so, so you can have lots of goals. That's like those plates. People have lots of goals. They think they have a mission. That, that's not necessarily the same. Well, it's not the same thing. And so it's not a goal. It defines my significance. You see, when I have a life mission, I, I understand my marching orders, my purpose, my, um, my assignment is what God wants me to do. And, you know, when you're asking about what's my life mission, you should say, well, what does God want me to do? One time, a year, several years ago, I had somebody working for me. He was my assistant. He was doing general stuff, some of the stuff around the church. And anyways, he wasn't doing his job. And so I would give him assignments each day, and then he wouldn't do it. I'd check in with him the next day. No, you didn't do any of that? No, no. So after, I kind of started getting frustrated. I said, well, what's going on? I give you all these assignments. You're not doing any of them. He goes, well, it's real. It's, it's just like this, Andy. He goes, uh, your, he goes, your priorities, they're just not my priorities. <laughs> he doesn't work for me anymore, <laughs> in case you were wondering. That, that was, that, I got crystal clear on that. You know, okay, I got it. See, but the thing is, is God has priorities for you, and you might be saying, I mean, we laugh and go, oh, yeah, could you imagine working? You know, that wouldn't work out. Well, that's how some people treat God. You know, oh, God, your priorities aren't my priorities. That's a problem. And so you, can, you have a life of significance when you get those in alignment. It's also based on God's purpose for me. God has a purpose for you. It's unique, and he wants you to discover the purpose he has for you. It expresses my shape. That's an acronym we use around here to refer to your spiritual gifts, your heart, in other words, the, the passion that you have, your abilities, the natural abilities God's given you, your personality, everybody's got a unique personality, and your experiences. The truth is, God will never waste any of this stuff. It wouldn't make any sense. It'd be bad stewardship, right? And he doesn't. We'll waste it, but he doesn't want to waste it. It would certainly be part of that. It expresses my life. And it also clarifies my roles. In other words, throughout life, we'll have different seasons of life, different roles. If you're, you know, when you get married, you're a partner. If you're in school, you're a student. That's a role. <clears throat> If you, have a, if you have a child, you're now a parent. And let me just say real clear, if you're a parent and your kids, you know, they're young, part of your, your, your life mission will include that. It involves taking, watching and taking care of your kids and, and, and intersecting with their lives. So how do I discover my life purpose? Well, it is a process. It is a process, but you want to take time to really get some clarity on that. What is and, and, and the truth is, God has a specific purpose for you. He says, the Lord has assigned each of us a task. We each have one purpose. How many purposes? One purpose. And each will be rewarded according to his own labor. He's saying it's different for each person, but you have a purpose. And, and, and that's what the measurement is. When you get to the end of your life, it's not how good of your life you live. It's did you figure out your purpose? Where did you live out your life mission? That's really important. I don't know if you... Remember that movie, uh, The City Slickers? It's several, it's a couple decades old, I think, now. But in the he's Billy Crystal's kind of the main character. This guy's a side character. His name's Curly in the movie. And uh, and he's trying to give him advice about life and how to make your life, you know, count. And he goes, he lifts up a finger, that's his finger. He lifts it up, he goes, Life's about this one thing. Billy Crystal goes, What, your finger? He goes, No, about one thing and you've got to figure it out for yourself now there's truth to that but what curly missed was that one thing is what god has for you it's what god has for you people are trying to figure out what is that one thing what am i supposed to do and they get confused real easily you have two options to figure out your life mission that one thing your purpose and most people they just guess 
They just speculate. They're not sure. Speculation. They just kind of, they conjecture. They don't know. Maybe one way to do this would be go down to the local college and take a, a philosophy course, philosophy 101. It's usually taught by some guy, big beard, smokes a pipe, you know, and he just, you know, he conjectures about, you know, why you're here and, you know, where you're going where you came from, <clears throat> and it's just his opinions, and you just kind of listen to him, and then you go to the cafe, or, you know, drink gallons of coffee, or go to a microbrewery, and gallons of beer, and just kind of, you know, and you're all guessing, or you follow the tweets of Elon Musk, and he's a multi-billionaire, and he said, you know, hey, th- this earth is a mess, let's, let's, let's put our sights on an inhabitable place like Mars, and maybe our problems won't follow us there, and that's our purpose. And I mean, everybody's just kind of. And the problem with guessing is, is uh, your answer is no different than mine, and we're all just. It's just like the blind leading the blind. We don't know, right? So that's one way. The other is revelation. In other words, if God actually had something to say about it, I mean, you can read a, a book on philosophy, or you can read God's book. His book that he says, hey, I actually have the owner's manual out on what you're supposed to do with your life. You go there, you'll figure it out. You'll see, hey, this is my God-given purpose. I'm here for a reason. And when you have that, that starts to bring it all into, all into picture. Okay, now I get it. Now I understand why I'm here. It says, don't act thoughtlessly, but try to find out and do whatever the Lord wants you to do. He says, that's part of your life mission is to figure out what your life mission is. What am I supposed to do? And when you get this right, when you figure out, hey, I'm supposed to bring glory to God, like Jesus said, hey, my life was about bringing glory to God. That's, that's, your life, that's part of it. You, really, that's our life mission is just, I, I got to bring glory to God. That should be included in there. Because when you realize that's it, then when you ask those questions, why am I here? Who am I? Where am I going? Where did I come from? You're going to have different answers when you realize that God created you and that your job, that we're supposed to bring glory to God. So what I want to do is is when you're looking at your life mission, you want to ask four fundamental questions, four questions. And then the Bible actually has four answers. So we'll look at that, your four questions. The first one is, is, what will be the center of my life? That's the first question you ask yourself. What is the center of my life? What, what's the core what am I living for? The question, the issue here is, is who and what am I going to live for? You see, people answer that all kinds of ways. Some people, <clears throat> they live for, you know, they live for their family or they live for their kids. And it's their life is all focused around that. And, of course, the problem with that is nothing wrong with having kids. Obviously, I had kids. I love my kids. But if your life is all about that, then you end up being controlling. You end up... Uh, always worrying because your life's centered around that. If the kids mess up, you go into depression. You go, it messes with you terribly. If, if, uh, if your kids, when, when they do, when you're an empty nester, you're, uh, you, your heart is empty. You're not, your nest isn't, it's not just your nest you're worried about. You're now your heart. I mean, your life is a mess. If you build the center of your life around your career and you lose your job, you're a mess. The thing is, is when, what you build the center of your life around, it should be something that can't be taken from you. Otherwise, when your identity's wrapped up in that and it can be taken from you, when that's gone, you are a mess. You're, it, you're, you, you plunge into, <clears throat> into depression, all kinds of things. Here's the first purpose that God made you for. God made you to know him. He made you to know him and to love him. You see, the Bible says that God is love. It's Love's not God, but God is love. Love that doesn't have some way of expressing itself is worthless. If you say, oh, I'm so full of love, but you don't express that love to uh, something or to an animal or to a human something, then it's worthless. And God created you to love you. That's the way he expresses his love. It says he created you to love you. And so discovering that God loves me, that, that's what it means to know him. Not just to know about God, but to know that he, he wants a relationship with me. And he wants me to know him very closely. He knows you. He knows the good, the bad, the ugly, everything. But he wants you to know him. And so he invites you into this relationship. That's our purpose, is to, 
is to know God. He says, Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. Somebody asked him a question. Basically, what should be the center of my life? This was his response. Hey, it's all about knowing God, loving God, having that connection. That's where you're anchored. Nothing, that can't be taken from you. Now you've anchored your identity and your life mission into something that no matter what happens, that is anchored solid. That cannot be taken from you. Knowing God results in every other kind of understanding. He says it all begins with knowing God. But notice he says every other kind of understanding. You were trying to figure out the questions like, who am I? Uh, why am I here? Where am I going? Where did I come from? When you, underst- when you get it, when you realize, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm in relationship with God. God made me to love me. I'm, my life is to glorify him. It starts to become clear. It starts to become clear for you, okay? It says That's why Paul said, above all else, I want to know God. I want to know Christ. I mean, he didn't always have that clarity. But he goes, I get it now. When I'm living out a focused life, a life of purpose, I need to anchor that in with knowing God. That's the first, the first purpose that we're made for. Who's the center of my life, okay? Number two, you ask, what will be the character of my life? What will be the because God's in the character development business. He wants to grow your character. <clears throat> He's way more interested in uh, not what you do, but what you are. So often we're, th- we're consumed with what you do, especially like parents. It's all about, hey, I want you to have a good job. I want you, and we're focused on that. Listen, if you're a parent of a young kid, you should be making sure your kids are clear on this issue. It doesn't matter what you do. You got to believe that, I guess, right? It doesn't matter what you do as long as, you're, as you know God, as long as you're doing what God wants you to do, as long as your identity is you know, growing in Christ, as long as you understand you're, you're, you're following the Lord. That should always be the priority that we tell our kids. That was always the priority that we told our kids. That, you know, doesn't matter what you do. Choose, you can do all kinds of jobs and still be in God's will. But God's interested in developing our character. When you pray, even though when we pray, most of us are looking for something. We're looking for some kind of blessing, some kind of answer. And certainly God's great at doing that, and he loves to give stuff. But you know the greatest blessing that happens through prayer is what happens to you. In the process of prayer, whether you get it or not, whether it comes the way you expect or not, whether it's in the timing that you want or not, what happens in your life, that character that develops, is what God loves so much. And it happens in prayer. It happens when we intersect God. So when we're asking that second question, what's the character of my life? Here's the purpose, the second purpose God made you for. He made us to live free, to find freedom. Freedom from the habits, freedom from the, the, the old kinds of thinking, stinking thinking, you know, the negative thinking the, 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 that, that we think about ourselves, that we think about others, the stuff that pulls us away, that, that just lives, we just, we're just defeated. And we put a, good, put a good game face on, but the truth is, God's purpose is for you to live in total freedom. What does that mean? What does that, what means that we start to live more like God wants us to live, to live in his image. Look at, I love this verse. It says, for from the very beginning, God decided that those who came to him should become like his son. In other words, we're living more like Christ. If you read the, if you read the gospels, you see Jesus lived a pretty free life. I mean, he didn't know have hangups and habits and the kinds of things that pull us down. I mean, he lived in full freedom. And that's the kind of life God designed, desi- desires for you. That's the purpose he has for you, is that you live, you live a life of freedom. How do we get that kind of freedom? Well, certainly it's something that God gives us. Now, notice it says here uh, in Galatians, it says, but the fruit produced by the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we call that the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit, okay? Uh, but really what it means is it's the results. The fruit of the results of living a life of prayer, going to God and His Word, going to small groups. What happens when that happens? Well, he says, this is what happens. He says, something happens within you, and it's divine. It's love, and it's varied expressions. It's joy that overflows. It's peace that subdues. It's patient that endures. It's kindness and action. It's a life full of virtue, 
faith that prevails, gentleness of heart, and a strength of spirit. Never set the law above these qualities. No, there's just no rules and regulations that are going to mandate this. Why? Because this happens immeasurable. It's limitless. In other words, the truth is human love, human patience, human peace, that wears out. People get married, and they're full of love, and they're patient with one another, and there's kindness happening, but you give it a little bit of time, and all of a sudden, you know, that stuff starts to wear thin. Sometimes it's just gone. Human love, human patience, all this, we, it just runs out. Well, that's why we need to tap into a bigger source. God gives this to us, and this is the kind of freedom he's describing. He says, when you can live that way, how do you, dis- how do you grow in that? Well, God puts you around people. People that either uh, help you to grow in that because they're the opposite of that, or they're encouragers. We need both. We need heavens, heavenly sandpaper, and we need heavenly encouragers. Heavenly sandpaper, you know what those look like, right? You go to work, and they're trying to rob your peace. And you're going, well, dang, man, that's heavenly sandpaper. Now, you might have thought they were coming from, the, you know, like, the, you, you know, you're from the devil. But, you know, I, I suggest you take the high road on this, you know. Heavenly sandpaper, you're, the, you're causing my peace to be, refer, re, re, I'm, I'm growing in that. My character's growing. I'm developing freedom to live in peace regardless of circumstances. Anybody can find happiness at Disney World or wherever you go, but, but listen, finding joy when you're in the midst of some difficult times, that's something eternal. That's something God gives. Anybody can, can just be relaxed and patient and peaceful when you're, you know, fishing somewhere on the pier. But when you're in gridlock traffic and people keep cutting you off, okay, now, now it's time. You're growing in that character. God's doing something in you. And so the Bible says, and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. So he'll put you in opposite situations, but then he says, like in a small group where we find freedom, he goes, there'll be people to encourage you. And you need that as well. You don't just need a whole bunch of people that are against you, they're causing you hardship, right? We need a group that is cheering us on, saying you can do it, and cheers us on to love and good works. Get back in the ring. You can do it. God's growing you in character. They're praying for you. They're protecting you through prayer. They're connecting with you relationally. They're challenging you to grow and take the next step. All of those things are so, so important. Okay, so what will be, this is the third question. What will be the contribution of my life? So we looked at what's the center of my life? What's the center of my life? And the the Bible says God's first purpose for us is to know him is to know him. What's the character of my life? Another important question. And the Bible says that God created you to find freedom. The third question is, what will be the contribution of my life? What will be the contribution for my life? The third purpose that God made us is to discover my purpose. In other words, you are here for a purpose, and that purpose is to make a contribution. It's not just to live for yourself. Some people, that's, they're all consumed with themselves. It's all about me. It's, I, I'm, I'm only interested in me, and, and, uh, and, and, and they live selfish lives. There's just, it's all around us. God says, hey, I want you to make a contribution for your life. Your life is more than just living and using up resources and dying. Uh, God, God, the true, true joy comes through realizing you have a contribution to give. You're there to help other people and discovering my purpose. Now, we have uh, a, something called, we call it growth track. Growth track is to help you to discover your purpose. Take you through all four of those. It's only, we only ask you for one hour for a week for, for, four, for four weeks, just four hours. Today, I don't know if you know, is step one. What's better than step one starting? If you're going to start in, I mean, step one. And so right after you leave, on the, on the right-hand side, just we'll take care of your kids. We've got food. Come and let us partner with you to help you figure out what is so important that contributes to your life mission. It says, you know, what is my purpose? It's really important. The, the Bible says God has given each of you some special abilities. Be sure to use them to help yourself. No, it doesn't say that, right? That's the RSV. That's the revised substandard perversion, <laughs> which is what some people read, you know. I don't think there's a translation out there, but they insert it. No, no, it's to help other people, right? 
passing on others God's many kinds of blessings. So God gives you blessings. What's our first instinct? Do it, you know, what am I going to do for me? God says, no, when he blesses us, what's my contribution? How do I be more generous? How do I be more open-handed? How do I look to enrich other people's lives? There's a story told of somebody who uh, went to both heaven and hell, and an angel kind of took him to both. He went down to hell. He saw mounds of delicious food, mounds of food everywhere. People were sitting, everyone in hell was sitting all around these tables, but nobody was eating, and they were all starved. They were, they were shrunken. There was no laughter. There was no smiles. They were, uh, their eyes were sunken in. It looked terrible, but it was all this food. And then he goes, the angel takes him up to heaven. Same scene, mounds of food. Delicious looking food, all warm. But everybody's laughing. Their faces are shining. They're, you can tell they've been well fed. And the guy looks at the angel. He goes, well, I don't get it. What's going on here? He goes, well, I don't, I don't know if you noticed, but everybody, both in heaven and in hell, had a four-foot long fork strapped to each one of their hands. And in hell, they were trying to always feed themselves with all that stuff. And so they starved, they were starving to death. But in heaven, they realized they could feed each other with all of these blessings. And, and you know, obviously that's, that's just a metaphor, but it's, it's, it, I think it describes what life is supposed to be like. We're, God gives us blessings to serve one another. He goes, that's why we were made. discovering your purpose. And it says, it is God himself who has made us what we are and given us new lives from Christ Jesus. And long ago, way before we were born, long ago, he planned that we should spend those lives in helping others. Helping others. So if you're going to be on your life mission and you really figure out your purpose, it's going to be, my purpose, part of it includes serving others, caring for other people. Last question, what will be the message of my life? What will be the message? You actually communicate a message. When you do good things, it's not just because you're an overgrown Boy Scout or Girl Scout. I mean, it's not, we're not just a bunch of do-gooders. We actually have a message that goes along with our patience, our kindness, our joy, when we are generous, when we're kind, when we, when we, when we serve others. All those things, there is a backdrop, a message that's being communicated. Well, the fourth purpose that God made us for God made me to make a difference, to make a difference in people's lives. And that message that we communicate is the gospel. The, in other words, the gospel means good news. God has given us good news to share. And we share that individually. We share that collectively. And that's how you make the biggest difference. Now, you say, well, hey, you can make a difference uh, without uh, sharing the gospel, I mean, people make a difference all the time. People do make a difference, but if you want to make an eternal difference, if you want to make the biggest difference, then you will affect people's eternity. You realize heaven and hell really are on the line. And so you share what God has done in your life. Now, a lot of us, we don't share because we think God wants us to be a salesman for him or an attorney, and this is not at all what he wants. He says, you are to be my witnesses. You're just supposed to say, this is what God did in my life, in my life. Now, when you're sharing your faith, you just share you just two things, two rules. One, be humble. Don't be a know-it-all. You know, you know like you've got it all together because you don't. Right? Neither do, do I. And so you just, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm getting it together. I'm finding freedom, but I'm in process. And then also be real. Just be real about it. Be vulnerable. Don't, you just say, hey, this is where I'm at. This is what's going on. And you, you share. Now, the, here's, notice this. It says, the, God, the good news, this is Jesus' first sermon. He says, the good news is to heal the brokenhearted. Do you know anybody brokenhearted? You bet. People are brokenhearted all the time. Now, we put on a good game face, so a lot of times we don't know. But I can guarantee you there's brokenhearted people right now in here. There's broken people uh, listening online. There's brokenhearted people. And you don't even know it. Why? Because we are experts at putting on our mask, right? You don't go out all, you know, you just kind of put it on. And, but you start, you start talking to them and do some, you know, you know, real conversation happens. You realize, wow, there's some, you're brokenhearted. And God has good news for you. He can bring healing. He says, and announce the captives that shall be released. The blind shall see certainly uh, physically blind, but also, you know, there's different types of blindness, right? 
and people that are confused. Uh, the downtrodden shall be freed from oppression and that God's ready to give blessings to all who come to him. So Jesus says, hey, I've got a message. And some of you, you need courage. Everybody here knows somebody who is far from God. Everybody here knows at least one person who's far from God. And you might be the only Bible to ever read. I mean, you might be the only Bible. If you read, you know, in the Gospels, they were written by four people. And they each had an audience. You know, Matthew, he's audience, he's a Jew, he's writing to Jews. Mark, he was writing to the Romans. Luke, he was a Greek, he was writing to other Greeks. John was writing across ethnic barriers. I mean, they had a, hey, this is the story that has happened to me. And then there's the gospel according to you. And a lot of people never read Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, or anything else in the Bible, but they'll read you. And you have that privilege, an opportunity to share to open up your mouth and say, hey, this is what's going on. And we also want to team up with you. That's what we call our dream team, where you bring them to church. And we will be faithful to share the gospel here and show them what God, you know, and kind of hopefully get them to laugh a little bit. They'll see us sing and, and rejoice in God, and then they'll, see, they'll hear about the good news. And we get to partner with you. But you see, you know people I will never know. But if you bring them here, you bring them, we... We're in this together. And it's not just me. I mean, from the minute they get out of their cars, we people greeting them, watching their kids, watching their youth, uh, giving them a cup of coffee, whatever. I mean, all the way through, we're, we're trying to love on them and, show, and talk to them about the good news. So there's, there's really two ways. One is you share, you share your own story, and then two, you invite them. You invite them. Last verse, life is worth nothing unless I use it for doing the work assigned to me by the Lord Jesus the work of telling others the good news about God's mighty kindness and love. This is a big part of making a difference. You want a life that makes a difference. It's going to include my life message, that what God has done. We don't hide that. We are bold about that. And it's easy to hide it in this, this, this age of where you're shamed and you're ostracized and all these kinds of things. But listen, be, be confident. Be confident in what God's doing in your life. And let God do the work. You just be, be yourself. Be real. Be humble. Share your story. It's your story. You're an authority on your story. And then let God do the rest. Okay, let's bow our heads and pray. Holy Spirit, we just invite you here right now. Lord, I know that you've, you're at work in every person's life, here and online, and so, Lord, we just help us to, to believe, to believe with joy and amazement that you really do love us. God says, I care about you. Your life does matter. I want you to make a difference, to discover your purpose, to find freedom. But ultimately, God says, it all begins with knowing, with knowing him. If you are far, some of you are, you're, you're not close to God. You're, you're, you're here this morning, but, you know, maybe somebody invited you, maybe you found us online, but God knew years ago you would be here so he could communicate his message of good news. You might be brokenhearted. You might be confused. You might be downtrodden. God says, I'm going to use even those things in your life that are painful to weave that into your life story, into, your li and, into what he's doing in your life. He will never waste a pain. We do, but when we submit it to him, he goes, you know what, I can, even, I can even use that. If you've never put your faith in Christ, this is your opportunity just to do it right where you're at. I'm not going to ask you to stand up or come forward. I want to pray with you right where you're at, right where you're sitting. So with every eye closed, every head bowed, I'm going to ask you just, just to pray along with me, okay? To Say, yes, I want to know you, God. I want to discover your love. God's already been working way before today. But this is your moment right now. 
This is your moment. And so I just want you just with every eye closed, every head bowed, I want you just to tell God, hey, God, this is, this is my heart. This is my prayer for you. And I want you just to do that just by raising your hand right now, right where you're at. Would you do that? Raise your hands and say, God, amen. Bless you. Just say, God, I, I want to know you. I want to know your love. I want to discover you. I see you over there. Mm-hmm. Anybody else said, this is my moment? Yep, in the back and halfway back. Okay, up front. Go, would you put your hands down? I want to pray for you. Would you say, God, today is my moment. With your help, open my eyes. Help me to see how much you love me. Would you say this in your prayer? Just say, God, the lies that have been told to me over the years by people who even love me, but it's contrary to what I, what I learned today about you. Would you say, God, help me to see those are lies and to not believe them anymore? Would you say, I want to put my faith in Jesus Christ? I want to be a follower of him. Help to build my character so that I can find freedom. Would you say, God, help me to live a life of purpose? and contribution to others and help me to make a difference. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for tuning in to today's message. If God is impacting your life through this ministry, join us in reaching others by investing today. You can give by texting your donation amount to 757-230-2110 or by going to vineyardchurch.com slash give. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss an update. We'll see you next week.